Hey everybody, it's Ash and welcome to my homestead kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you some tips on how to make strawberry jam. Okay, so here are going to be some supplies you need. Obviously you're going to need whatever kind of fruit you're using. We're using strawberries today. You're going to need some sort of pectin. I like these Sure Gel packets because they come with great directions. There's only six steps to making jam. Um, if you want to make jelly or freeze jelly, all these directions are right in here. They also make a pink box version, which uses less sugar. I normally like using that, but right now I could only find this, so we're going to use the more sugar recipe this time. You're going to want a couple of bowls, because you're going to be able to want to cut these off. I just put the tops in one bowl. I put the strawberries in my colander. Um, and then inside my bowl. So what I'm gonna do is fill this with water when the strawberries are in there, a little splash of vinegar. I'm gonna let them sit and I'll just pick up the colander and then rinse them out. That way all the dirt stays on the bottom. If you don't have a colander, by the way, that fits into a bowl, put your strawberries in the bowl with the water and vinegar, let them sit, and then use your hand to pull them out and then put them in the colander to rinse. That way you don't stir up the dirt that's on the bottom. Next, you're gonna need your jars. Now, some jars come with the lids and rims already on them. If you have jars from previous year or somebody gave you, just go right to the store, buy new lids. You'll need new lids every year to get a proper seal. Rims, however, you can reuse over and over again for generations. Now, the best thing to get is one of these kits here. This is going to pull your jars in and out of the hot boiling water. This is great size for filling your jars. This right here has a little magnet on the end. This is for picking up the lids inside the boiling water because we want to sanitize them. And then you're just going to set it on your hot jar and then just, oop, well, normally pop it off. <laughs> just gonna pop right off like that. This is a cool little tool. It's like a little cheat tool. You'll see in the directions with the pectin, it'll tell you headspace. That means like how much space you're going to leave from the top of the jar. That's very important because it will boil out of your seal and make a big mess and not get a good seal. Doesn't mean it's bad if that happens to a jar or two, just make sure you use that first before it spoils. But that's what that little tool is for. You're definitely going to need sugar, paper towels because your rim needs to be perfectly clean. So you're going to wet the paper towel, wipe your rim off just to make sure no jelly got on there. So you get a great seal. Next, you're going to need some pots. So this pot's going to be full of water. It's a very large pot, as you can see. You can get them at any store around Target, Walmart, Brookside, Wadler's, wherever. I got mine at Wadler's. Um, and inside should be one of these. Now, this is meant to go right inside your pot filled with water. And what that purpose is for is the jar itself is going to sit right in these rims. It does that because when it's boiling and it's going to sit flat, it's gonna rock and knock your jars over. This is able to let it sit on top. You'll be able to fit seven jars or four jars. You don't need all seven. And then that way none of your jars fall over. You can use this and pick it out when you're done. However, I like this tool here, be able to pick my jars in and out one at a time, less risk of any casualties. You're going to need a nice pot to put your strawberries in to cook them down to add the sugar and pectin. I put a pan back in here. This is just for steril sterilizing my glass jars. And then all the way in the back is where my lids are going to go. So these guys are going to go in here in water and boil the whole time. That way they sanitize. We get a great seal. Everything's happy. So now I'm going to cut all the tops of my strawberries off. I like just using a paring knife. There's a bunch of different tools out there that you can use. I find a paring knife is quite easy. This part is the most tedious part of making strawberry jam. Uh, most time consuming. Picking them I think goes faster. Um, so if you have little ones around or your spouse or whatnot, have them get involved and help you slice the tops off. Um, most of my family has been doing some sort of putting up food and storing it for the winter or to have all year round for quite some time. I used to see my grandma doing it, my aunt doing it, my mom, 
um, and I always wanted to learn and be able to do it. When I was at 4-H, then I found out we could enter in the fair, get ribbons, get a little money for placing if we did well. Um, so lots of different options, not just making it to put up. You can even enter your jam in the county fair in the open class, so anybody is can do that, sign up and do that. It's so much fun. Get a little ribbon at the end of the day if you did a great job. Um, plus, I like just being self-sufficient. I love learning the old ways. Um, crocheting and um, I really want to learn how to get good at caning a chair. My aunt uh, here in Hawk gets really really good at that. So um, I'm always looking to learn new things. So me and my kids we like jam, we like the seeds and the strawberry but we don't like the chunks. Um, an easy solution is to puree it. Once I've lined it up, I'm gonna measure out five cups and then put it in our saucepan to cook up. Um, another idea is if you go strawberry picking and you're not, um, it's either too hot or you just don't wanna make jam right away, just wash them, top them, throw them in a freezer bag and then bring them out at a later date. You just defrost them and follow the directions in the package as you would as if they were fresh. So now we have our five cups of strawberries pureed, seven cups of sugar. We're also going to want a half a teaspoon of butter. This is going to reduce the foaming and boiling over. And we also have our one package of sure gel. So now I'm going to add my five cups into my pan. We're going to add our half a teaspoon of butter and one package of pectin. You're going to mix this up and you want to bring it to a boil, a roiling, rolling boil, say that 10 times fast, which means when you're stirring the, the strawberry mixture is still boiling. So once you get to that, then you're going to add your sugar. Okay, so here's going to be what a rolling boil looks like. I'm stirring it and it is still boiling. So now I'm going to add my sugar to the mixture. Put that all right in. And I'm just going to stir this up until it's all combined. Then when this mixture gets to another rolling boil, you're going to set your timer for exactly one minute. You're just going to keep stirring it as it's boiling for one whole minute. Then immediately shut off the heat. You're going to pull it off onto your counter. And then you're going to want to take off any of the foam that's on top of the spoon and just put it on a plate. And then we'll begin canning it in our jars. Okay, so now that my mixture has boiled for one minute, a rolling boil, you want to scrape off with a metal spoon all of this foam. It doesn't really hurt the jelly at all, but it has a weird texture once it sets up. So it's just better to get that all out. So take your time in getting this all out. All right, so I got most of the foam out. Now I'm going to ladle it into my jars. My jars are hot. This pan here. I like to ladle it right along the side so I don't get any air bubbles. You can see just like how beautiful this jam looks. It towards the top. I'm gonna lift this up. This is a quarter inch head space on my directions. Use that little tool, like I said, or eyeball it. 
So now all my jars are filled. I'm going to wipe the rims. Lots of dish towels work great for this project. You can just kind of grab a hold of it so you can see there's like a little bit of jam. Just turn it around just quickly. Wipe down all these. Just get a nice, good seal. Remember, these jars are extremely hot. Okay, so once they're clean, we're going to use our magnet tool to put the lids on. our dish towel again so your rim here you're going to just finger tight them on just slightly tight make sure you get a good thread on them Okay, so now we're going to move these guys into the boiling water. So we have nine jars out of two quarts. And now we're going to put them in our boiling water for 10 minutes. Make sure you read the directions because jellies have a little bit different time. want like an even number in here as well so I'll do four this round and five the next I'm just gonna set my timer for ten minutes and then we'll pull them out so our ten minutes is up I'm gonna turn down my heat a little bit Pull out our jars. Alright, we're just gonna set them on a dish towel, evenly spaced apart so they cool the same amount of time. Once you get all your jars processed, as they start to cool, you'll hear a pop. That is music to your ears. The pop means that it's sealed. If a couple of them take all night to seal, that can happen too. So you want to let them sit for 24 hours, come back, and you'll see that the lid is indented in. You don't want to touch it uh, while it's hot because if you do push it, it will seal. Um, if you don't get a good seal on just one or two, throw them in the refrigerator and use them up. If it's a whole batch, unfortunately, you'll have to crack all your seals reheat it up and rejar it bottle it up put it in there for another 10 minutes and hopefully you'll get a seal that time um, i hope you guys enjoyed making jam with me today um, if you have any questions you can always check us out on instagram or facebook